The last control structure that we want to touch on here is the try-catch. This is used for error handling, uh, as with the other control structures in Scala, with the exception of while and do-while. It is an expression, and we use it for the situations where things can go wrong. So if you're coming from a Java world, you're used to try-catch, but there are some differences, one of which is the fact that it is an expression in Scala. So, in order to make this useful, we actually need to have some ability to uh, produce an error. And a common situation for that would be I have a string and I want to convert it to an integer. So it's possible that our string actually is a happy number. And in Scala, you can just call the toInt method on a string and it will give you back an integer. However, if I run that, that's all happy. It prints out the stuff we have from earlier videos. However, if this was not a happy integer and I run that, I get this. I will get a runtime exception. It says it's a number format exception because that was not a valid number. I need to be able to identify that and deal with it in some way. So in this case, let's say if it is a number, I want num to have the value of that number. And if it's not a number, I just want num to be assigned to zero. Right now we're just going to give it some reasonable value. I can do this by putting the code that might have a problem inside of a try block. And then I have a catch and this is where the syntax is different from Java, the catch actually looks like a match. It has a number of different patterns that go inside of it in cases. You can also, this whole syntax of curly braces with cases inside of it, this creates what are called partial functions in Scala. So they appear on the match, they appear on the catch, and they also appear in certain situations where you are directly using something called a partial function. Now this is an instance where the pattern that I want to match on is actually for a certain type. Who knows, there are all types of things that could go wrong uh, when we call to int. Maybe if this had been a really long program that was using some type of whole bunch of memory, maybe we would get the very unfortunate situation where calling to int actually caused us to run out of memory. If that happens, I don't want to try to catch that. Okay, so instead, I only want to catch the exceptions that are of the type that I really know how to deal with here, and that is our number format exception. Just like with the match, I follow my case with a rocket, and then I give it the value that I want this to, to have. Um, so we try to convert our string to an integer. Note this syntax here. It's just like when we specified types for arguments or when we did it for variable declarations, we have the name, which is becoming a new variable, and then a colon and the type that we want to, to specify for it. So this catch will only catch number format exceptions. If some other exception happens, it's going to still escape from here and, and crash the program just like this. But in as you can see, this works just fine. Number should have the value zero. We could print that out so that you can see that it's actually doing what it's supposed to. And of course, if I get rid of the A so that it parses properly, then I get 123 from this. So that's the basic idea of a try-catch. One thing that is very important to note, here again, we've talked about the fact that for our ifs, if we use the if as an expression, probably the both cases should have the same type. We saw that for the match, it's more meaningful if all of these cases give back the same type. I have actually had students do something like this where they have their case but they wind up just printing out information and then they get really weird errors. Uh, this is just a warning because it's saying that zero is not doing anything. If you look at num now, it has a type called anyval which is once again one of these types is not all that highly useful to us most of the time and the reason for that is because print line gives back a unit so I'm getting an int or a unit and Scala has to figure out what to do about that 
it is perfectly valid to print something out in this case or to somehow provide uh, information that something went wrong, but the last thing inside of here needs to be the value that you want to give back and it should probably have the same type as what's inside of your try. So that's just a, a cautionary issue, something that I've seen people mess up quite a bit. When you do a try catch, if you are using it as an expression like this, you need to make sure that not just one case, but all of the cases that you are potentially catching all give back the same type that you want for your main expression. Otherwise, things are going to get a little bit weird.